Now I would like to invite Dr. Meena CK to give her uh, talk on intermittent exotropias are not difficult to manage. Dr. Meena is a senior consultant in uh, LF uh, Hospital, Little Flower Hospital, Angamali. Over to you, Dr. Meena. Good afternoon, everyone. At the outset, I would like to thank KSOS and Elizabeth Ma'am for this opportunity. I'll be speaking on intermittent exotropias. So all of us know that intermittent exotropias, it forms a major percentage of all exotropias, and it's one of the commonest deviation that we see in daily practice. It is an exodeviation that is intermittently controlled by fusional mechanisms. So etiology, though we talk about various etiology, that itself shows the exact eti etiology nobody knows. But we have seen that it is very commonly associated with refractive errors. So the other etiological factors mentioned are the innovational and mechanical factors, but we don't have exact proof for all this. Defective fusion, a de problem with the accommodative convergence, accommodative ratio, but what we see is mostly refractive errors association. Now coming to classification, there are various classification uh, for intermittent exotropia, but the simple one will be a basic, class, a basic intermittent exotropia where the deviation is the same for distance and for near, which is the common one that we see. Then you have the divergent sexes, as the name indicates, the deviation is more for distance than for near. Most of the cases, the deviation is more for distance than for near. But when it is more than about 10 to 15 prism diopters, then you call it a divergent sexes. So whenever you have a divergent sexes, what do you do? So commonly, normally, the deviation has to be less for near because you have all the fusional components acting for near. So you try to remove the fusional components by occluding one eye for a long, for a while, like you occlude it for about one hour, and you reassess. So when you reassess, be careful that the fusion shouldn't happen. It can happen within a second. So try to remove the path slowly and reassess the deviation. And if the deviation is now almost the same, then you can call it a pseudo-divergence excess. And you have the convergence insufficiency, where the deviation is to be more for, dis for near than for distance. Now coming to the workup, workup has been dealt with so well by Dr. Gigi. And for any strabismus, the workup is the same. You have to assess the vision, do the refraction, do a cycloplegic refraction, and go for orthoptics. So one point that you have to remember when you go for orthoptics is that try to do your sensory evaluation first. This is mainly because you don't want to remove your fusion or binocular single vision by doing an occlusion, which you usually do to assess the for motor evaluation. So do a sensory evaluation first, and if you can do the stereopsis first and it's there, then rest assured that the patient is having binocular single vision. And if it's not there, do the fusion and simultaneous perception. So a case of intermittent exotropia, here you can see the child is, this is a very common thing that you uh, see in the OPD. The parents bring the children telling that there's a deviation and you see no deviation. Occlude one eye, you can see that the deviation coming and you measure the deviation with uh, base in prisms. That is, the apex is always towards the direction of the deviation. So how do you go about intermittent exotropia? It is, uh, though we tell it's easy to treat intermittent exotropia, it's easy to treat, it's easy to operate, it is easy to give glasses, but when you, uh, you have to make a decision as to whether to treat it or not, because this is something that is intermittent that is happening very rarely, and you don't want to treat it and make it into constant. So that you have to keep in mind before going, rushing for surgery. So that is one thing that is difficult about intermittent exotropia. So you should have an idea of the control of the deviation in intermittent exotropia. And though you have lots of scores, 
telling that if your score is 5 if your score is 8 you have to do this do the do that it's not that easy in the office the office control the home control most of the time the parents may not be noticing or then uh, the parents most of the parents bring the patients to you when some guest comes home and tell that the child has got a deviation so mostly when the child enters the office itself you can make a decision like if it is a good control if it's a fair control or a poor control so like here you can see this child uh, looks ortho see on occlusion you can see the deviation but as soon as the occluder is taken out the child is orthotropic so this child is more or less fair to good control and she is blinking her eyes before fusion so this child is having a fair to good control but here you can see the child was brought with a uh, parents telling that intermittently the child is squinting but as soon as the child enters your office you see that the child is squinting most of the time and it's a very large squint and this it's a baby too so in such cases you may have to advise surgery early and here again you can see the child with intermittent exotropia sometimes it is very difficult to elicit the exotropia so you will have to do multiple occlusion and as you keep on occluding the deviation can increase now coming to the treatment part once uh, it's a very common occurring in our opd you need not treat all the cases so you have to decide when to treat and how to treat there are non surgical methods and surgical methods and um, options will be like uh, the non surgical methods uh, as i mentioned earlier refractive errors is a very common association of intermittent exotropia and very commonly you can see myopic astigmatism associations like myopia so in such cases treat the refractive errors and there can be tricky situations like occasionally you get hyperopia with intermittent exotropia and you will be confused whether to treat it or not if it's a literate child it's not difficult you can assess the vision and give glasses accordingly but if the child is pre literacy then you have to take your decision whether to give glasses in hypermetropia because you, as obviously we know hypermetropia if you treat in intermittent xt it can cause a reduction of the control of intermittent exotropia but usually you see a myopia or myopic astigmatism and there are also proponents of over minus glasses if the child can adapt to the over minus glasses because of the accommodative component the deviation can decrease so that is one option you can give over minus glasses i do not use much of over minus glasses but you can always try and prisms we rarely use and whatever non surgical treatment you give you have to reassess the child in 3 to 4 months don't be in a hurry let the child adapt to the treatment and see them again in 3 to 4 months or even 6 months and then decide on what further you have to do so what are the indications for surgery it's mainly poor control of the strabismus and you feel you can assess the stereopsis the child is in the literate phase or the child is cooperative and uh, if the stereopsis is deteriorating and amblyopia is setting in and also for cosmetic reasons when you have a large deviation the parents can be uh, even oh, eld adults can have intermittent exotropia which comes in very large uh, measurements so in such cases also it's better to go for surgery so what are the surgical ob options obviously in uh, squint we have mainly two types one is you weaken the muscle and the next is you strengthen the muscle so usually intermittent exotropia the best will be to do bilateral recession but even though in intermittent exotropia you can have large deviations like in deviations beyond 50 you can go for recess resect procedure so here the recession is being done and uh, the muscle Uh, the mass uh, the 60 vicral sutures are used and uh, the, the basic uh, thing you are doing in recession is you are putting the muscle back and weakening the muscle so the muscle is uh, disinserted and always make uh, have a idea about the original insertion of the muscle when you tailor your deviation based on the original insertion it's better so here the muscle is being put back and here glue is applied to the conjunctival wound for closure and we have seen that fibrin glue works really well in 
um, to close the conjunctival wound and it's very, uh, for the patient, it's quite acceptable. So to conclude, intermittent exotropia, the control matters, handled refractive errors, if postponing surgery, have a lookout for sensory status and vision, and amblyopia, though rare in intermittent XT, is not never. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Meena, for enlightening such a practical uh, way of managing intermittent exotropia in a very nice manner. Now may I call upon Dr. Arun Lal for his talk on acute committed isotropia. We all know during this COVID era, many children are attending in our OPD with uh, this complaint. So we all are eagerly waiting to know uh, from Arun Lal what exactly you are doing in your OPD for such patients. I invite Dr. Laila Mohan, moderator of this session, to please come to the dais. Thank you, Elizabeth, madam. Thank you, KSOS, for this opportunity. My topic is acute comitant isotropia. Acute, acute comitant isotropia is an acute onset deviation developing in previously straight eyes. It is a type of non-accommodative comitant isotropia, often associated with diplopia. 